we express to the God because of his blessing and grace we can attend in this room to join SP Tech Talk by SP Java section. Thank you to Pahari Susilo for spare your time to join our event. And we want to thank you to Wellborn Integrity Solution for sponsoring SP Java Scholarship. Uh, please uh, let me introduce myself first. My name is Ray Fandira Diza and I'm partnering with Sarasati Dina Putri. Okay, and we will guide you from the start until the end of uh, our technology talks even today with the theme of well abandoned and slot recovery with single trip efficiency by Pahari Susilo from Wellbar Integrity Solution. Before we jump to the material with Pahari, let's listen to a brief explanation of SP membership by Masori. Are you there, Masori? Yeah, of course. Okay, how are you, Mas? Good, uh, my voice clear? Yeah, sure. Okay, Masari. Okay. I'm yours. Okay, I see my colleagues, Pandi. How are you, Pak? <laughs> okay, um, thank you, moderator. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, hopefully, all of you always staying healthy. And before starting the SPD Tech Talk, yeah. Let me introduce what is SPE. And my name, Chaksananda Oriendi, uh, but you can call me Ori. Um, and my college, uh, Thomas Jamel Jr. We are from membership division of SPE Java section. Uh, next. Okay. Uh, what is SPE? SPE is a non-profit professional association with more than 140 members in 145 countries are engaged in oil and gas exploration and production. SPE is a key resource for technical knowledge providing opportunity to exchange information at in person and online event and training course publication and other resources. We will support professional in the oil and gas exploration and production industry, young professionals and students pursuing related degree with many benefits and opportunity. Uh, what's in it for me? Nah, I want to explain, yeah some benefit for you in here if you are become a member like uh, you can see in the screen uh, sp online education is the most of sp webinar are free to member and include live presentation training and so on and then spe connect this is sp member can virtually communicate with exchange knowledge with other members around the world, yeah. And then GPT or Journal Petroleum Technology, is a, as a member, we uh, also receive a complimentary subscription to SPE's flagship magazine, of course online, yeah. And then GPT e newsletter, uh, as well as discount on subscribe to peer receive. Uh, SPE technical journal and then one petro this is the largest online technical library that contains more than 200,000 documents from multiple professional society in the upstream oil and gas industry if you are SPE pro member you will get six free SPE annual along with deeply pricing on SP content found on uh, onepetro.org. And last but not least, SP member, you will get a registration discount to a hundred of conference, workshop, and course every year. Uh, in particular, Java section, you will additional benefit like uh, free registration for free for SPE Java event like this, yeah. And then volunteerism opportunity for SPE Java event, become a mentor or request a mentor. And for student, you can apply SPE scholarship. 
Uh, next. Okay. Uh, as you all know, SPE has two types of membership, professional and student. If you are interested with us and want to get benefit, you can register for one year membership, especially for student. Your payment will be sponsored by Stefron and it's free. And you can join today by registering online in spe.org slash join. You can see on YouTube the tutorial how to join SPE. If you have any question, don't hesitate to contact me, uh, especially for those professional who want to renew, expert member or student who want to convert to professional member. Uh, anything about membership, you can contact me. Okay, that's all. Uh, thank you everyone and enjoy the event. Back to the model. Okay, thank you, Mas Ori, for the explanation about SP membership. And okay. for now, for all the participants, you must be so excited for today's topic, right? But before we enter to the presentation from Pak Hari, there are several rules that must be obeyed by all the participants. For the first, participants will be mute during the presentation. And if you have any question, you can type in the chat box or use right hand feature to us directly during the presentation and Q&A session. Third, please wait until the moderator permits you to ask and get ready for the photo session at the end of this event. And don't forget to fill in the attendance form to receive e-certificate. Okay. Today we have an extraordinary opportunity to invite expertise who has experience in oil and gas industry, especially in well construction and well abandonment. And now let me let us introduce our speaker. Our speaker is Ms. Hari Susilo. How are you, sir? Wait, sorry, I could do Yeah, uh, good evening, guys. Uh, thank you very much for inviting this uh, event. So it's, it's good for us, good for me as well to know all of you. So yeah, hopefully we can collaborate in the future. Yeah, for the for the better. Yeah. Okay, sir. Good luck for your presentation. And Mara. Okay, Pak Hari Susilo is a senior petroleum engineering that has more than 18 years experiences in the oil and gas industry. He started his career in as intern at Pertamina FHFU in 2003, and up to this date, he has occupied various positions in fishing and remedial business as field engineer or specialist, engineer in charge, technical sales and location, or business unit manager. He also has worked in the USA, Indonesia, and Brunei, and currently, he is the country manager of Global Integrity Solutions, covering Indonesia, Australia, and Papua New Guinea. And ladies and gentlemen, now we are entering our main event for today. We will listen to some explanation about the topic of well abandonment and slow recovery with our great speaker, Pak Hari Susilo. For the participants, don't forget to drop your question on the chat box and get a gift voucher for the best four questioners. And for Pak Hari Susilo, the time is yours. Okay, thank you, Malaras. Okay, let me uh, share my screen. Yeah, uh, wait. Uh, let me know if you can see my screen. Yeah. Yes, but. Can you hear me clear on the mic or a little bit blurred? It's clear, Pak. You know, yeah. All right, okay. Uh, as what the moderator said just now, so there will be four uh, vouchers, yeah, uh, for the groceries. So we will providing four vouchers for today. We will send it to you and then, uh, yeah, make sure that uh, you guys uh, participate on this event. So. Yeah, basically, let's have it fun. And this is going to be the interactive section. And also, uh, not really technical details on this, because if you guys need more technical, uh, I can uh, set up on the separate uh, 
call, which is uh, consisting the uh, subject matter expert and also the uh, uh, party involved on this one. Yeah. So first of all, uh, I would like to say thank you for the SPE Java chapter and this safety moment. I would like to share my personal uh, what happened to me uh, two days ago. So basically, yeah, uh, we had uh, one of my colleagues, which is I met him in the morning or on 7 a.m. We had breakfast together and then two hours later he passed away. So to do the uh, a heart attack yeah so just I, I would like to remind all you guys to make sure that uh, do the medical checkup mcu every uh, every year at least at least we know earlier what's happening to our body and basically just a pre-alert yeah the initial alert what's uh, going on in, in in our body so yeah that's uh, it is sad yeah but it's it is true yeah i mean it is what it is but again i mean what we can do is just a precaution yeah all right. Okay, before we move on, uh, I would like to uh, briefly mention about the history of the Wellborn Integrity Solution. So we initially started with the uh, Smith uh, services. And then back in 2010, uh, bought by Salamaji. And then just lately in January 2020, so we are independent. Uh, become the Wellborn Integrity Solution, but we still have the uh, the main office uh, headquarters still in Houston. Basically, we keep remain the same uh, uh, manufacturer and also the, the global uh, footprint as the uh, Smith what it used to be. And then total, uh, we have we spread around thirty countries, and also. Total around 45 uh, location facilities and also, yeah, approximately more than 1,000 employees globally under WIS. Yeah. If you guys have any questions, you can just raise up and then no need to wait until the end of the presentation. Basically, this is interactive. So, yeah, basically, just, just raise your hand if you have uh, anything. So, the, the uh, global footprint, we are operating on this. Uh, basically almost uh, all over the place. And uh, in Asia, we have a headquarter in uh, uh, Malaysia in Kuala Lumpur. And Indonesia, we having two bases, uh, Jakarta and uh, Balikpapan, I can skip this one. So the, just briefly on the product services, basically we cover from the uh, life cycle of the wells, starting from drilling, completion, uh, production and abandonment. So we have almost cover uh, fishing services on those uh, segments. And this will be the uh, outline of the presentations, pretty much the uh, fishing services, the well bore departure. Uh, Tujubing, I'm not going to go into detail on the Tujubing. So the main focus on this one is going to be the well abandonment and then slot recovery. And I believe uh, some of you guys uh, not really uh, understand what our, the fishing business is, which is uh, basically our job is uh, to get and retrieve what's left in the hole, which is, we call it fish. So it could be uh, a junk metal hand tools, drill pipe, an expensive LWD, MWD, Basically, whatever loss in hole, we that's our job to to get it done. So it could be happen on the drilling operations. It could be a stack pipe loss, go and drop uh, ranges, part of the DHA string, and also quite a lot. We have a uh, operation in the work of for intervention operations, mainly on the uh, uh, recompletion. It could be part of tubing, corroded uh, tubing hangers, and casing collapse. Uh, wireline, bridge plug, etc. So that's pretty much the the jobs that we uh, cover at the moment. Uh, beside the abandonment services. So yeah, because when I talk to the some of the uh, students and engineers, they never aware that there is a fishing business in this oil and gas industry, which is 
I would say, honestly, there is no school dedicated for this. So this is basically based on the experience. And this is, I would say, the art of the, uh, the job, yeah. Right, so the jungle could be anything like what you say. And uh, I'm sure you guys uh, experience a lot. You've seen this in the field before, which is many times. So it could be from the uh, flat pack cables and then the wireline cables, uh, motor, uh, parted motors, bridge plug, stinger, whatever, which is quite a lot of uh, fish junk in the hole, which is that's our expertise to to retrieve it and then uh, we call it the fishing services so we provide the uh, knowledge uh, experience and product why we call it the experience and product because even though we have the same fishing scenarios and fishing job or problem the the uh, the outcome may not be the same so so even though you have a couple of years more than 10 years experience under your bed which is, I'm guaranteed 100%, not all of them, they are the same, uh, the same job or the same problem. So even though we fish the packer, for example, or we fish the tubular, the outcome might, might not be the same. So, so we really uh, uh, respect on the experience and also the knowledge yeah, on this uh, kind of job. Right, just uh, so I can just skip this one. This is just the uh, introduction. Okay, the next one, which is uh, we also have the product, uh, we call it a well body badger, or some people call it whip stock for the uh, multilateral, or basically sidetrack from the original holes. So I'm sure you guys, a lot of you guys, you. Uh, faced this one before and then dealing with this kind of situation in the past, I'm sure. So, so it could be single casing exit, uh, double casing exit or triple casing exit, which is uh, that's, uh, one of our expertise as well. And also in total in Indonesia, we have run uh, around 80 to 90 whip stocks, all sizes since I've been with uh, Smith. So there's quite a lot of uh, numbers uh, of runs here. Yeah. So we divided into three actually for this uh, type of whip stock, which is short and uh, standard and latest one, which is the elongated whip stock. So this uh, depends on the applications and also depends on uh, what uh, kind of dog leg the end user they're planning to have. So the shortest one, which is uh, consists of two milling assembly. Oh, wait, let me put the pointers. Yeah, the shortest one, which is the uh, by mill with two milling assembly, that will give us the highest dog leg and also the shorter windows and also the standard that we commonly use in Indonesia and all over the world, this is the standard whip stops. Uh, consists of three milling assemblies. And then just recent, recently, over a year, a year and a half ago, we launched the uh, quad mills, or we call it uh, elongated whip stock, which is uh, longest whip stock in the market, I believe. It consists of the four milling assembly. They will create uh, the smoothest dog legs ever because the it's very long, basically. So it consists of three, uh, fortunately, four milling assembly, which is on the top one. That's basically elongate the uh, the top of the windows. Yeah. And also, uh, this application also you customize for the anchors. It could be a standard anchors, and also the depends on the application also. It could be open hole set track as well. So it depends. Also, we have the uh, the packer element as well. We can uh, stand up to five thousand psi. So that's really uh, uh, customized actually based on the uh, jobs application. So this is just the uh, animation for for the whip stock. You you guys you might not see it. So let me play this one. If you guys have any questions, just just basically straight. Yeah, I mean, no need to wait to the end of the presentation. The Trike Master Select Whipstock system running assembly includes.
includes a bypass valve and a running tool to ensure that circulation is controlled during the orientation and hydraulic setting process. A transition joint is also included for flexibility during milling. The modular one-trip milling system provides bi-mill, tri-mill, and quad-mill configuration options to address a wide range of conventional, advanced, and specialized sidetrack applications. Mills include both high-quality tungsten carbide and PDC cutting structures. At the desired setting depth, the Trackmaster Select Whipstock is oriented to the required direction using MWD or gyro equipment. Once orientation is complete, the bypass valve is closed, allowing hydraulic activation and setting of the whipstock anchor. The hydraulic expandable anchor provides a large expansion range covering multiple casing sizes and internal diameters. Applying hydraulic pressure to the anchor extends the triaxial slips outward. Once the slips engage the casing ID, carbide inserts prevent axial and torsional movement, thus mechanically securing the whipstock in place. With the one-trip Trackmaster Select system, the milling assembly is attached to the whipstock with a shear bolt mechanism. When milling begins, the quick cutout ramp located at the top of the whipstock helps initiate an efficient milling process. Overpull and slack off is then applied assuring the anchor is set in the casing. The retention mechanism is then sheared allowing the release of the hydraulic control line and the milling assembly. The milling assembly is picked up to verify the mills have disconnected from the whipstock. The milling assembly is lowered slowly and rotation commences. The full gauge lead mill and follow mill initiate a two window cutout profile. The unique milling geometry also ensures that the follow mill elongates the full gauge window length. As the lead mill approaches the special mid ramp profile, it accelerates quickly past its center point on the casing wall. This prevents damage to the mill and ensures continued milling efficiency. The milling assembly transitions from the casing and begins drilling formation. As the milling assembly fully exits the casing, the full width window extends across the length of the whipstock. After the completion of the window milling process, the assembly is picked up assuring there is no abnormal drag. The remaining rat hole can be drilled to the desired depth. The Trackmaster Select, a history of innovation, unrivaled experience, global presence. Right, so this pretty much the animation of the uh, what Whipstock looks like, and also the uh, the application of the of the wells yeah, can be set in for the mechanical and also hydraulics. So yeah, that basically depends on the on the application. If you guys have any question, just go ahead before we move to the next uh, uh, topic then. Okay, sir. Um, there are two questions in the chat box. Uh, let me read the first question from Muhammad Aldo. <clears throat> Hello, sir. Or uh, Muhammad Aldo, do you want to ask the question directly to Pahari? Okay, so okay, I, I got I got your point. So basically, uh, there is no specific training for the fishing, and the only way you get the training on the fishing is by <laughs> joining the service company like uh, like uh, WIS, which is uh, we provide the uh, training ground for this uh, for the engineers. So yeah, basically, there is no special. Uh, institution or special uh, training uh, formally outside. So this is basically pure uh, internal training. Yeah. Is that answer your question or? Okay, thank you. 
Ya, yeah, next for Pak Sani. Right. So what casing size available for the track metal whip stop? So we are uh, we having a large amount of the varieties of sizes, starting from the two tubing four and a half, smallest one up to 20 inch. And then the most common one for Indonesia, this will be the 958 and 1338. On the geothermal, they're normally using 1338. And the uh, oil and gas, most likely so far is on 958 sizes. Okay, next from uh, Paul Bijaya, any specific tools to fish uh, well looking tools with radioactive source in it? Okay, this depends on the scenario. For example, if we have MWD, LWD parted or stuck in the hole, which is really to get the whole body off of the off of the, the well, basically. But if uh, you asking if there is any specific tools for the radioactive source itself, no, we don't have. Yeah, normally that comes with the uh, wireline uh, fishing tools, which is provided by wireline company. Normally, right. So that's three questions so far. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's no other question. You can continue your presentation. Yeah, you can sir. continue on the next one. Right, this is uh, just showing the case uh, study that we done. Uh, first, actually, we exit the low side uh, track master, we stop. So just a briefly uh, information, which is uh, the, there is a hinge pin over there on the whip stop. Uh, there's no picture of here, but basically only allow us to set uh, on the high side. But in this case, we managed to do uh, a low exit uh, side track. With the sum modification so this is the first for, for me as well just a case history example and then the next one we will covering the well abandonment uh, uh, topic or uh, chapter on this one so basically this is the technique to permanently uh, lift the well uh, because the well have uh, basically reached the current of the economical operations and then uh, based on regulation, normally the before the operator leaves the, the field, they have to uh, perform the uh, PNA, make sure there is no leaks and make sure there is no contaminant uh, to the ground and basically uh, secure the well as what it was before. Right? So, also there is another type of abandonment which is. Uh, Basically, the the program is trying to move the to the bottom hole location. So uh, basically, PNA the the bottom one, the bottom section, and then move up and then reuse the uh, upper section of the uh, perforation. Basically, there's also uh, another type, and then the the drive for the abandonment, which is we require uh, to eliminate the section of uh, part of casing sometimes. And also we require, uh, at some country actually, they require a fresh formation. So they require rock to rock cement plug to have the, uh, the better bond on the cement. Yeah, because uh, for example, if the previous hole is 12 and a quarter, they set the non weight casing. And then basically we need to get the section of the non weight uh, casing uh, cut or milled and also we need to get some fresh uh, formation bigger than uh, 12 and a quarter to get the fresh uh, bone rock to rock uh, formation there is a question actually with uh, from has a slon alaslon simanjunta question what are the difficulties in what uh, phase when the fishing of fish activities carry out. What circumstances or factors cause failure in using a fish technology based on your experience on the site and which country is the most difficult to do fishing of fish? Well, this is a good question, actually. Very good question. It's very hard to answer, actually. Right. Uh, basically, fish, uh, fishing the well, basically, we need the, the input. If we, if we were given the wrong information from for example, the tubulars, colors, or the dimension. Basically, we, we, we wouldn't get the fish out. So first, we need 
just like a software basically garbage in and garbage out. So if we can get the right data on the first place, hopefully we can get it done. Yeah. So that's the the first is the information, and then the second is we we choose the right uh, tools for the operation. That's the second one, and then the third one, which is basically rely on luck. That's the the main uh, three. Uh, factors for the fishing operation information given information and then uh, right uh, equipment and also the, the last one is just luck yeah we just just basically, basically do our best yeah is that answer your question pa yeah that answers my, uh yo thank you for the answer pa <laughs> salam kenal pa hari yeah, so uh, know, my next uh, my next question is uh did you uh involve the the chemical or uh, maybe we can say because we in the industry revolution 4.0 kind of the internet of things involving in fishing a fish did you did you involve that internet no but because we, this is purely a mechanical job which is we rely on the on the rig on the rig uh, instruments basically right so we cannot have the dedicated for example we cannot have dedicated line on the rig to to monitor the uh, the parameters but what we can do normally we have the uh, line with the mud looking unit yeah for the for the offshore wherever they have the high uh, higher in, uh, connection uh, internet connection but generally in 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 land rig this is basically just pure on on pure on the on the execution yeah so we we do monitor it uh, real time okay so uh, we can say that uh, almost uh, 100% you do uh, mechanical things in the fishing of fish correct yes mechanical oh, okay. and hydraulic correct yeah okay is there any uh, in the future you uh, in the future you developing uh, involving the IoT and all? Uh, what we the have future. developed in the past, actually, we record, this is for the we've talked uh, milling parameter. So basically, there is a, a special box which is uh, can transmit the data uh, real time from the rig to people, whoever people in town. So that's uh, what we have developed in the past, but it's not really give the value because uh, normally on the rig uh, they have their own uh, monitoring system which is uh, connected to the superintendent in town so so basically we just uh, use that one as the monitoring uh, module for the for the fishing operation okay pa. thank you thank you pa. thank you the the, the answer uh, please continue pa. Yeah, okay, thank you, Pat. So on this, uh, back to the well abandonment, which is we have a challenge, which is, as we all know, it's multiple trips, yeah. Uh, all of you guys know that the, the rig this, uh, comes with the very high uh, cost. So imagine if we have multiple trips to get it done, that's directly involved on the budget, on the AFA, which is, uh, that's what the operator is trying to minimize. Yeah, that's the, the challenge on this uh, abandonment technology. Right, so next, uh, just to give you the idea uh, on the well abandonment, uh, we need to have, we need to set the correct barrier. So this is the type of the issue that have happening on particular wells, for example, like the interface casing and cement, uh, micro analyst channeling, uh, interface casing with cement, also because of the scale dirt. So the cement bone is not, uh, uh, is not good enough. And also the uh, permeability of pores, cracks and channels. And some of the uh, area, they have a leak in the casings, uh, connection or casing deformations and also annual cement, et cetera, which is that's uh, impact, directly impact on the, uh, on the uh, abandonment uh, operation. Yeah, there is uh, one question right there. 
Uh, sorry Pak Hari, we have one more question from Pak Rahmat Diansyah. Oke, okay. uh, S-orientation survey or direction is one of the important part before set with talk, either using Jaro or others, just with talk engineering to be master in Jaro things or this particular job as the engineer. No, uh, the fishing engineer or with talk engineer no need to be master on the Jaro. Uh, normally, uh, uh, it comes with the uh, Jaro engineers or I almost mentioned the company's name. So basically gyro engineers and also the MWD engineer. Basically those orientation, we rely on both guys, either gyro or MWD. And then if they said, okay, so we 100% believe uh, they all okay, because we have no background and we have no capability of those. In the second one, why the fishermen found mostly are uh, outcast? <laughs> Okay, with gray hair, does it mean a young man is not qualified enough to do this difficult job? No, I mean the the option is is basically is open for for everyone. It's open for everyone, and then uh, some of the uh, engineers actually, I mean they have a like gray hairs like me. That's because of this too much thinking. Actually, it's not 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 just only the job, but just too many problems maybe. Yeah, I don't know, so. Okay, uh, maybe from uh, Pak Rahmat, uh, do you have any comment or any question? Yeah, and also I need to no, add no, the, no, normally the old guys related directly to the, to the experience yeah, normally, I mean, It doesn't mean that the young guys have less experience. No, it's not like that. But generally, I mean, the 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 longer uh, service years in the industry, then normally they they have facing facing the uh, lot of issue in the past. Basically, just uh, experience. All right, and then the next okay. from Pak Teddy, what's the level of difficulty for fishing party tubing? If this is only part of being in the uh, re relatively small size, for example, like three and a half or two and seven inch tubing on in the seven inch holes, yes, I mean this relatively easy. But again, nothing easy on the on this fishing job because many things can happen, right? I mean, this is could be straightforward pickup job, but again, I mean. We never know. So what we can do, we just planning uh, plan A, plan B, and plan C, and then see how so we that's going to bring us to the to the decision tree, basically. Because on the fishing job, yeah, there is uh, uh, we cannot we cannot basically simply try every every tools, right? So basically, we need to have limits how many runs, and then we need to have a cut off. Uh, cut off, uh, cut off uh, steps, yeah. How many steps, and then how many PHAs? If we reach to the maximum PHA number, for example, we need we have reached four uh, runs instead of supposed to be three, and then yeah, that's going to be the decision from 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 the operators. Is that it's going to be stop or continue? Uh, Pak Steve Hartono, yeah. Okay, thank you, Bahari. Uh, yeah. Maybe if it's okay with you, uh, in the next question, uh, firstly we have to ask the participant: Is it they want to ask directly to you in person? Uh, so this event will be uh, interactive. Uh, is it okay, sir? Okay, next, have you deal with the slot recovery of a live well where there is a gas in the annulus between production casing, intermediate casing, and surface casing? So it's not really live well, but what I have uh, experienced in the past, so we perform the slot recovery PNA, but uh, the well is bubbling. So we ended up with the around 10 days extra, basically just to cure the bubbling. 
So we set up the cement plug just over and over. They spend 10 days for the 20 inch uh, section. So yeah, basically the, the depth is getting higher and higher every day because just pumping the cement plug all the way up. That's the, the, uh, the experience that I have in the past. Uh, is, uh, the well is bubbling and a slot recovery on the live well, no. Because normally on the slot recovery, basically we sacrifice the current slot. Basically we just uh, cement plug and then no pressure, no, uh, no also there's no annulus pressure and then cut the casing out and then do the, uh, the side track normally. And the uh, surface side track with the, uh, I forgot the name, is that like a guide shoe, or, uh, like a surface whip stop, which is the big one, 20 inch, yeah. Is that the uh, answer, Pat Steve, or? Yeah, it is. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Pat. Okay, next. Uh, right, so this is the conventional approach yeah, for the uh, for the PNA. So general approach, we need this uh, first uh, trip to set the bridge plug, and also second trip, uh, verify the cut, set the speed, circulate the annulus. Uh, trip three, basically we pull the casing to surface if it is free. And also there will be step four, which is additional trips, cellular cuts as required, which is uh, a lot of cases when we do the cuts, we cannot pull the casing out. So we need to, we need to cut higher and higher. Uh, I saw Mas Amir Basu on this participant there. So he also experienced with the current uh, jobs uh, in Juna, which is we, uh, couldn't pull the, uh, the uh, casing out due to some reason. So, so yeah, this is the conventional approach for the uh, simple PNA, I would say. And then uh, the challenge, like I mentioned before, which is the number of trips. So we can uh, have a new technology, which is we minimize the number of trips by putting combine all those four trips into one assembly, which is we call it a safe uh, trip saving cut and pull system. Basically this consists of the either bridge plug or bit, but this is optional. It can be customized. And also the uh, above it, there is a, like, a, I would say like a, a guide or some kind of taper mill and then a, a, Above the type of mill, there is a, a, a cutter, basically, casing cutters, and also packer, also optional. And on top of the assembly, there is an extended uh, ridge uh, spear, which is uh, basically it is spear, which is can go deep down. And also the, we combine those uh, multiple operations into single trips. And then in fact, which is directly reduce the number of trips also reduce the, uh, the cost and also the operational risk. So next, this is the, uh, the animation of the efficient cut and pull, so will be.
Okay, so that's basically the sequence. Uh, we drop the ball to release and set the uh, bridge plug on the very bottom and then pump semen all the way up until the certain uh, depth. And then uh, we... Sorry, Pak Hari. Maybe we have one more question from Pak Baso Amir. Maybe from, uh, for Pak Baso Amir, do you want to ask directly to Pak oh, Hari? Okay, Pak Baso Amir. Uh, does the WF have an abrasive cutting system? No, Pak. Uh, uh, I, can, I can directly to the person with the with the right equipment actually uh, i cannot mention the company's name but again i mean i can i can directly to the person who has the abrasive cutting system and it's not really quite common in indonesia uh, normally for the abrasive cutting system is the very uh, common in, in north sea so basically, this is the just some kind of uh, small particle sense, and then uh, we pump through up to twenty thousand psi, just abrasive, and cut through all the casing in one go. Yeah, I have I've seen it before. Yeah. Uh, next, uh, thank you, Pak Andi. Uh, next from Pak Jeffrey Purba. Fishing tool actually is not scheduling operation, which is contingency based on your experience. Will every execute fishing job have any time frame targeted from client? If the fish is not hooked, not pull out a hole, then what action required? Yes, so basically we're just like a firefighter. So have to be ready anytime in 24 seven and it is contingency, it is emergency, which is if they call for the fishing hand, something bad happened. So, so they don't really like us, but it is what it is. So, so for example, if we perform the jobs and then the fishing is not, um, it's not, it's not retrieved, it's not free, there will be additional uh, BHA. That's why before we perform the fishing job, we need to uh, supply like a plan A, plan B, plan C until it reaches to the maximum limit, which is we cannot use the same BHA, we cannot use the same tools over and over. It's got to be different. So that's why the we call it the art of the of the fishing. Yeah, okay, Pat Jeffrey. All right. Okay, so continue to that uh, one uh, effective uh, pull system, which is started from uh, bridge plug and uh, pump the semen all the way up. Uh, first, uh, that the first ball and second ball basically to uh, activate the uh, casing cutters. So once the casing is cut, we will see the uh, pressure drop in on the surface. That's one of the indication that the the cutter arm is, is fully open, and also. Once gone from cut, we can try to pull it out. If it's not free, then we have to put higher uh, cut. Yeah, we cannot we cannot cut uh, deeper or lower than what we cut before. So it's going to be uh, upper and upper. That's the pretty much the summary of the uh, efficient cut and pull system. And next. Uh, uh, this is basically a uh, moderator. Are we on track with the timing or not? Yeah, we still have time, a lot of time. Okay. Yeah. So, there, so, thank you. All right. So, this uh, efficient cut and pull system consists of uh, four main uh, components basically a bridge plug, uh, a pipe cutters, uh, tension set packers, and also extended reach. Just the the four components that uh, have the, I would say, the life of these tools. And then the next slide, this is only the uh, uh, spec uh, specification of the extended reach uh, uh, spear. So as of now, we have only 958 up to 10 and three quarter. The 13 and three eight still under uh, test at the moment. So it's not launched yet. So the one that uh, officially launched is only 9.58 and 10 and three quarter. So also we have 
several uh, case history jobs uh, in North Sea. So we haven't had any run history in Asia Pac at the moment uh, because of the requirement. So basically this is a limited tool. So we only bring it whenever it's required or client asking for these tools. So this is one of the uh, the example on in North Sea, which is uh, utilizing the extended reach uh, uh, spear, uh, cut and pull, uh, and then uh, after the calculation, which is it's, it's proven saving 1.6 days of the rig time in, in North Sea, which is we can imagine 1.6 days uh, of floater operation that's equal, uh, I believe, over a million. So. That's the uh, the result, and also the uh, we answer the challenge that uh, is normally uh, occur on the uh, plug and abandonment system. And then the next one, uh, still on the well abandonment system, uh, we have also pull master hydraulic pulling tools. So basically, these two just uh, same same as the jacking unit. So don't hold jacking unit. So this is allow uh, to anchor to the uh, upper casing and also it will deliver pulling capacity up to 1.2 to 1.5 million depending on the size. So this is a good option. Yeah, I would say good option for the uh, rig which is normally have the lower pulling capacity. For example, like walk of rigs and also uh, 550 or 750, 850 uh, horsepower rig. So this is what the tools that they need for the uh, cutting operation. So why we need these tools? Normally after the cutting operation, the casing is not free. The casing got stuck due to the uh, contaminated or barite or cement, even cement behind the casing. So after we cut, the casing is not come free. That's why we need these tools basically to uh, uh, create the impact on that uh, stuck point and then move it up. Yeah. So also we have uh, another case story on the pool master. So this is a modified uh, pool master, which is we hang it on the on the plate actually, which is, this is specific design. Okay, Pat, uh, Pat Steve. Okay, I, I will wait then, yeah. This is the specific design, uh, another case story. Uh, next one. Also, we have the uh, pool master generation two, which is this is a single trip cut and jack system. So basically, this is combined uh, with the previous technology, efficient uh, cut and pull. So this is uh, provide the single trip cut and pull system with the hydraulic pulling unit, and then also provide the uh, the high capacity pulling load to the stack casing or tubular. We will have the, an animation for this, so we will explain better actually. And then you can go up to the multiple cuts, depend on how many do we need, and also pull and jack at the same time. So also this is enable uh, recovery of the stack casing on the rig, which is have the limited pulling or jarring capacity. For example, like the uh, five, 550 horsepower rig, normally they can go up maximum only 300K. With this uh, jacking unit or pull master, it, can, it will deliver equal to 1.2 million force, which is we will not utilize any draw work or drilling line. So this is basically pure the anchoring system on the casing. And one of the requirements, we need to have the good cement bond on the casing, otherwise the casing, casing will collapse due to the, the high uh, power and the high impact of the uh, uh, pool master. And also we combine the a positive don't hold motor. So we cut the, uh, the casing with the motors and also spear above it. And 
uh, some sort of uh, some sort of the uh, uh, space out tools. Yeah. Yeah, Pak Andi Bahtia, great tools for pulling out uncemented liner drilled by that Japanese. Yes, correct, Pak, because normally during the days, Dutch and Japanese, they can they, they only drill. They don't care how we do the work of ours, how do we pull the packers, and then how do we uh, uh, cut the casing. This has happened to me also uh, when I was in Brunei. There was a well drilled by Dutch back in 1946. So there is no history at all. So this is just sharing basically. So yeah, that was a, a difficult one. So basically we fish the packers, we fish the completion without any data. And also, also um, I had experience in Brunei as well, which the well was drilled in 1938, if I'm not mistaken. So there is no standard wellhead over there. So basically, we just, <laughs> it was fun actually. So uh, they welded the, the, the wellhead to, uh, to the casing head. So basically, there is no, I would say there is no technical stuff over there. Basically, they just do, they just drill, and they just cement the well. So yeah, that's that's one of the uh, difficulties if we're dealing with the old well. Yeah. Okay. Next. Uh, yeah. So back to this pull master. Well, what is a pull master cut and jack? So basically, this is a. Uh, uh, casing uh, similar uh, casing jack system is designed for the multiple casing cut and high pulling uh, capacity in the single trip and also a trip saving system to efficiently perform a casing recovery in a plug and abundant slot recovery application so the next will be the animation for this and uh, this is uh, basically i have uh, explained earlier just to summarize uh, what is uh, pull master effective uh, for and yeah we go for the animation and then give you better understanding what the tools looks like and how it operates
So there is the video. Okay, on that uh, pooling activity, we are not involving any any uh, offer pool on the drilling line, yeah, on the top draft. So basically, this is uh, connect to the normally cementing line with the minimum twenty five uh, barrel per minute, and basically the the operation is convert the pressure to the strokes. Okay, next, uh, Pat Steve, uh, unless the limitation is caused by the limited load on the platform or the platform rig on the old platform where the mag load has been degraded is this the old slumberger or smith uh, yes but steve so we will smith actually initially and then uh, yeah on i, the, I yeah, didn't but. recognize the the company name yeah so so initially we were smith uh, smith services and then i have brief, uh, previously yeah 2010 uh, bought by slamaji and then uh, 10 years later which is 2020 so we are separate and became uh, independent now as a well integrated solution bar okay 
All right. Thank you. I guess you have limitation, isn't it? Uh, if you on the platform, on a with a platform, Rick. If in the platform, yeah, especially on the old platform, yeah, there Correct. will be a limitation. Yeah. So you cannot, you know, you you try to use the maximum load, but even the jack jacking system is not gonna uh, <laughs> help yeah, you the, in this the, case. The best way on the the old platform actually just having the jack up rig over there. That's the the best uh, scenarios. Yeah. Sometimes you cannot do that too. Yeah. Sometimes too many lines uh, underneath Correct. the the platform. Yeah. Hmm. Right. So this is uh, the uh, schematic uh, on the pullmaster jack and uh, system, uh, the anchor and. Uh, a pull master, uh, inline spear, we, we call it, and then pad cutter, uh, last one on the very bottom, which is tapering me as a guide. And there is a space out as well, uh, either three colors or heavyweight, but normally we prefer three colors for the space out. Um, okay, so this is the, the schematic, yeah. So, this is only apply if we cut the casing on the first place and the casing didn't come free. That's why we need this uh, uh, jack unit. So we pull the uh, inline spear to the, to the top of the stump and have it set over there and uh, we activate the, the pull master over there to get the uh, basically uh, additional load, which is equal 1.2 million maximum. And also the distance on the travel on the uh, stroke is 18 inches only. Yeah. Okay, Pa Halason, there is some development and improvement in the future of my MPT. Yes, correct, Pa. Yeah. So basically, the challenge, as I mentioned before, is the uh, multiple trips. So this is basically the answers of those uh, challenges. Yeah. Uh, this is summary, basically, the applications, uh, subsea platform and land wells, and, and also uh, the benefits. Um, as what I mentioned earlier, this is uh, the, I call it the efficient way, which is saving the trips and also uh, directly uh, saving the, the, the cost as well. And in the next uh, abandonment uh, solution, yeah, normally uh, not all the wells, yeah, we need to cut and pull the casing out. And for example, like uh, some of the old wells in uh, Sumatra, the way they uh, abandon the well, they just perforate the wells and then just squeeze cement, pump uh, cement on the uh, pay zone. Basically, just to to isolate to the uh, to the formations, and then uh, one of the method we need to perform, which is uh, the old method, which is we call it perf uh, wash and cement. That's the uh, common method actually, which is quite uh, odd at the moment. And then the second one, also the Saxon milling, which is um too many uncertainty if we're doing the section milling because uh, we need to handle the uh, metal swarf to the surface and then also it may need require multiple runs etc so this is one of the solution on the uh, uh setting the barrier with the uh, with the getter we call it getters so this is a hydromechanical uh, it's not casing cutter actually. I would say this is a puncher, and then this is non-explosive. Uh, could be an alternative for the perforation gun, and also can be deployed on the coil tubing or jointed pipe as well. So basically, we uh, run into the hole and we uh, set to the depth uh, whatever required, and then we just pump through it. And then when we pump through it, there is a cutter that basically penetrate and punch the casing. 
and it is blade actually, which is a super duper power blade and can go up to the uh, double casting as well, up to the 1338. And then uh, one of the advantage, this is non-explosive, which is easy to carry and no need to have a permit, etc. And then it's pretty handy basically. The tool itself is only uh, six meters, which is easily to, to transport with the, with the single 20 inch basket. And this is the uh, result looks like uh, on the left, which is if you see the, the diameters of the plate, this is quite uh, huge actually. And then for sure you can pump cement through it and then isolate the, the well. And also this is also applicable on the uh, uh, double, not double actually, uh, dual cemented casing as well. You can see here, this is 958 by 1338 cemented. And then, yeah, as the result, you can see this is easily uh, punched and then easily cut the section of the uh, casing. This is one of the method, yeah. Uh, I would say the most efficient one if we do need to pull the casing out and squeeze cement. Uh, sorry, Bahari. Yes, Pat. You have different sizes of get gutter perforator? Yeah, gutter, uh, the smaller size we have uh, four and one eighth, and normally for the five and a half liners, and then up to nine and five eighth. The biggest uh, size currently available is eight and quarter. And then we can uh, can be set, yeah. Uh, especially as I mentioned on this uh, uh, slide, which is if the casing is cemented, nine five eight by thirteen eight is is doable as well, yeah. So the maximum size having is uh, eight and quarter. Thank you. Okay, next on the uh, abandonment, uh, of, of course, yeah, uh, there is a, a wellhead retrieval system over there, which is uh, recover the surface casing and also the subsea wellhead, which is only for the subsea abandonment. So the, the BHA uh, consists of the uh, cutters and uh, some stabilizers and also the uh, wellhead leads. So the wellhead leads is Basically, it's uh, similar like a collet, uh, collet grapple, which is um, customized actually, depends on the type of the wellhead. And then what, what they do, basically they cut the casing, as the, you, you can see it on the right-hand side over here. And then, yeah, once the casing is cut, you can just pull, pull it together with no issue if the casing is cut. Okay, next. Uh, oh, Pa thank you very much. Yeah, this is a uh, uh, prolet, which is commonly, uh, currently is, is being used in North Sea quite often. And this is kind of our anti new technology on the uh, uh, wellhead retrieval system, but currently it's not available in, in Asia at the moment. Okay, next, uh, also uh, as part of the abandonment, also we will cover the uh, section milling. So what uh, it does actually, uh, we call it pro mill duo. It will allow us to uh, remove uh, some part of the casing, uh, a section of casing. And then in this case, it is can be used to remove uh, two casing size at the same time. For example, the 800 series, which is uh, commonly used at the moment, can, can go up to the 1338 uh, casing configuration. So the knife or the blade, yeah, if it is fully open, it will reach the 1338 uh, casing as well, which is uh, at the end, we do both, uh, we, we do both section milling 958 and 1338 at the same time, yeah. On this on this one 
the latest case history we have done it lately uh, three months ago in Brunei for the uh, section milling uh, 958 by 1338. We're using the same uh, tools. And also one of the uh, advantage, which is it is safe time because we only need one trip yeah, to section mill two casing string at the same time. And also, of course, we will reduce the swap handling, which is, uh, in fact, it will associate with the HSC issue as well. The more we are dealing with the uh, swap, which is a sharp object, it will, uh, the more we do with that, I mean, it's, it's dangerous actually. Quite a lot of uh, recruit actually, they had a, a hands, a fingers injury because of this uh, swarf. Yeah. So this is the, the run story that we uh, have so far, but we haven't included uh, Brunei since it is just uh, three months ago. And also apart from that uh, section milling, we also need to touch on the uh, uh, milling technology which is, uh, if you can see on the screen, so on the very left side, there is, we call it a mill master or P5 insert, which is, this is the, uh, uh, a button actually, a button that we put it on the, on the plates. This is the one who cut and mill the casing. So on the, on the very left hand side, this is the old model, which is, as you know, that, uh, the ROP normally between 2.8, maximum maximum normally 3 or 3.5 uh, feet per hour. And then also uh, lately, uh, two, year, two, three years ago, we have uh, developed the uh, cutting technology, we call it a uh, wolf uh, edge, which is slightly better on the uh, ROP. You go up to 3.4 feet per hour. Also with the wear average is around 55% compared to the previous one, which is 80% average uh, knife wear. This is means that whenever we run these uh, uh, cutters or the knives, typically it will wear between 80 to 90% worn out. So which is on the, on the middle one, is only 50, 55% worn out. So slightly better. And then also this is the latest one, we call it True Edge. True Edge just launched six months ago. So uh, since the first launch until now, it milled around 1900 feet as our database. And also there are 16 runs up to date, which is the average ROP is uh, actually double if we compare to the previous model with the P5. And also the average uh, wear knife is very minimum. It's only 40%, yeah. And 85%, we use it in the single trip application, which is, which is quite uh, high numbers actually. Next one, this is a, just a case study. Uh, so a record on the single trip system milling windows achieved with the new uh, insert milling technology. This is the, the true edge. So the summary, which is, well, the challenge, first of all, we, we six mill hundred meters uh, of a 10 and three quarter P110 casing, which is quite hard uh, casing. And also the result, which is, uh, we made a single trip footage of 81 meter. This is very long actually for the section milling job here. Yeah? One run, you went up to 81 meter footage, that's very long. The way I see it. And then run one is 81 meters, 100% wear, which is okay for me, it's normal. 100% wear made 81 meters, that's, that's fantastic. And I said the run two, only 19 meters, basically uh, mill the remaining of the casing and with the 10% wear. That's, that's fantastic, yeah, the way I see it, compared to the the old model uh, that we uh, have on the current market at the moment. And then also the top ROP during milling is went up to 4.5 feet per hour. That's, that's fast actually for the uh, 60 milling job. Yeah. You have any questions? Yeah, just 
uh, let me know the, we, we reach on the end of the presentation. This is exactly one hour as what the moderator uh, uh, briefed me before the presentation. So if you guys any questions, concern, just let me know. Okay, thank you, Pari, for the uh, what is it? extraordinary presentation. Uh, next, we will continue to the QA session. We still have uh, time until uh, 21 uh, past 45. Is there any question you can ask directly to Pahari uh, with the chat box, or you can uh, raise hand? Yeah, Mas Refi, just to uh, give the, the, I would say the, the gift or the fortune that we will share to the four participants, this equal to 500,000 for per, per person. So there will be four vouchers, yeah, basically by the end of this uh, presentation, we will reach you for those uh, four participants. Yeah. All right, let's go. Maybe we'll announce it uh, after the PNA session episode. Yeah, after the PNA, yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe uh, I want to ask a question uh, until there are another participant to ask. Uh, in the web stock and the mailing, uh, what is the function of the second and third mail in the mail string? Why we can only use one mail, sir? Yeah, okay. If we use only one mail, the length of the window will be short. Yeah. So the function of the second and the third, basically, to elongate uh, the, the second one, uh, the function is to elongate the window. And then the top one is to dress the window, make sure the window is smooth and uh, in gates as per what we uh, propose. Yeah. For example, if we having nine five eight with stock, which is eight and a half milling assembly. So the but the bottom one we call it the uh, uh, we, we call it tri mill. The the very bottom one that's for the I would say we call it a puncher basically just to initiate the uh, the mill. So once the uh, the bottom one is ex, uh, slightly exit the uh, into the formation, the the top one above it that's penetrate the upper uh, upper window, yeah, elongate and also the top one is just to dress to dress the window. There is a there is a an, an animation actually. If if you wait, wait. there is an animation also, which is clearly indicate actually the function of each particular mills. Point is also mill, high quality using those allowing high expandable angle diameter slips and torsion system with a shear bolt on top of the whip supply to the release of the hydraulic control line and the mill and assembly. The mill and assembly is picked up to verify the mills have disconnected from the whipstock. The mill and assembly is lowered slowly yeah, and rotates. You can see on the left, this indicates the full gauge the window lead mill or and file profile, mill yeah. initiate a two window cutout profile. The unique milling geometry also ensures that the follow mill elongates the full gauge window length. And then once. As the lead mill approaches the special mid ramp profile, it accelerates quickly past its center point on the casing wall. This prevents damage to the mill and ensures continued milling efficiency. Yeah, the top one is just to dress the window, make sure it's smooth and then in gates as per the, the window requirement. Yeah. Oh, okay, so it will make a smooth hole, right, sir? Yes, just uh, smoothen the, the window, yeah. From okay. the end, uh, how long it takes normally to do the single trip operation system for well abandonment or well recovery? Well, it is depends. The more complicated the well, the more 
well, the more uh, actually, the more complicated the well, I mean, it will lead to the to the longer uh, operations. That's why I mean, for example, like Sapsi, it is the most complicated one, and then it will reflect to the longer operation. But for the Jacob, for example, like the platform, generally depends uh, for the three string, for example, nine five eight thirteen eight and twenty ins average. I would say four to six days. That's the the average because the the longest one is actually handling the casing, especially especially the big one. With the big casing, if you have uh, twenty by thirty, that is the longest uh, time actually handling the uh, the casing on the surface, and especially if the casing is cemented. 20 inch by 20 inch cemented, that's not easy to handle. That will inform the users, et cetera. Yeah, um, Mr. Steve, do you have any question? Yeah, and the section mail uh, to the uh, two strings casing section mail that you mentioned. Yeah, yeah, but uh, if the casing Let's say the inner casing is eccentric to the outer outer casing. How do you manage to you know to section mail the outer casing? If the inner casing, oh, sorry, but you breaking up a little bit. If the if the inner casing is eccentric, not in the center to the outer casing. Yes, that's happened a lot actually. Uh, if the Inner casing is eccentric, which is uh, normally on the on the on the. Uh, let, let me try normally to the big here. the big size casing. Yes, yeah. yes, the big size. Yeah, I mean, if for the dual casing, dual uh, milling application, there shouldn't be any issue. But there will be an issue if we do the single section milling because. Once the inner section is milled, the knife will damage the outer casing. So yeah, that yeah. on the on the uh, single uh, case, section milling operation, that will that's difficult actually. And then a lot of case, the knife is bent. Mm -hmm. A lot of case. And then if we do the dual. Uh, uh, section milling application, we, we shouldn't worry about the outer casing because we're going to mill it anyway. Well, if because your BHA is not, it's not, is in the center of the inner casing, isn't it? Yes, but the BHA the is in the, so yeah. You, you could just end up milling the partial, uh, partially, partially of the outer casing. Yeah, the the knife that we have, we have anticipated the uh, eccentricity as well, but. What is the maximum sweep OD of that? Let's say what? the 95 by 1338 section mill. Okay, on the 1338 is went up to 14 and three quarter. And then on the ninth, sorry, on the 1338 of 14 and three quarter, and then the 958 is 12, either 12 and a quarter or 13 and a half between, mm. between those numbers. Yeah. I forgot the exact figures. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's quite common, but that's quite common if we. Yeah, it is. The bigger the casing, the, the, uh, the more common that, that is. It is, yeah. Because you, you could find probably uh, less. Less likely uh, a good centralizer out there. Uh, yes, and then actually, if we mill, even though the even though there is an eccentricity issue, but the casing is well cemented, that's easier actually compared to the loose uh, loose casing string because mm -hmm. a lot of vibrations, a lot of bouncing. Correct. Yes. All right, thanks, Barry. Yeah, thank you, Matt. Okay, um, maybe I have another question, sir. Um, during milling one section casing, 
and two section casing like example uh, 13 3 per 8 and 9 5 per 8 section is there any difference equipment or method that you use sir uh, okay uh, the only difference the size of the tools is the only different for example the tools uh, are we talking about the individual section milling or yes uh, like, section milling? Uh, when we do milling in if the, only... if the indi yeah. individual yeah i mean every size is different we cannot we cannot use the tools for 958 for 13 and 38 so we we cannot use that the section milling for the individual is got to be precise for example, like the 958, the tool is going to be minimum eight and uh, eight and a quarter, and then must have two stabilizers above and below for the stabilization sleeve, which is normally eight and a half. And also the knife is customized. Yeah, the knife for the 958, we cannot use it to the 138. That's that's very customized. It's going to oh, be. Okay. Yeah. I see. Okay. Um... Is there any question from the participant? There is so, one. Parahmat, excellent presentation. Thank you, Pak. Is the PDM on the uh, pull master jack and cut system BHA work the same as smart motor? Yeah, uh, principally, yes, the same. But this is a special design mark motor, but we cannot use the uh, the common mark motor that available in the in the market at the moment this is special one yeah which is uh, comes together with this assembly okay uh seems like this mr steve have another question oh <laughs> it it should be a lower rpm eh? yeah for the milling it's got to be lower yeah we cannot use high rpm it is yeah. a low rpm high torque yeah correct Okay. Uh, looks like positive will get the voucher, eh? <laughs> <laughs> um, is there uh, is there any question anymore? Maybe we can continue uh, to the next section, or it is the section that we waited from the beginning. Uh, Pahari, are you uh, already got the name for the for? uh lucky person that yeah so we we okay. get the name so we have reached the end of the presentations basically and then uh almost finished with the question answer so yeah as i mentioned past steve he got the the first uh voucher. uh thank you past steve for the participations and also the second one thanks Barry. thank you pa. thank the second one pa rahmat fedians yeah very good news. Thanks, Pari. Thank you, Pak. And then the uh, third one, Pak Halason Simanjuntak. And then the fourth one, Pak Muhammad Aldo. That's the four participants that uh, thank you, Pak. Contributing the most on the on the question answer sessions, yeah. Uh, thank you very much Pat, for the uh, participation yeah so the uh, moderator from the spe uh, java chapter will reach you out because we need to send the uh, voucher to to you so we need the, the address as well okay all right mas refi uh, we yeah. i think this uh, that's the last presentation from my side we hand it back to you okay Thank you, Pahari. Uh, once again, it is a really great presentation from Pahari Susilo. And I want to say congratulations for Pak Steve, Pak Rahmat, uh, Pak Halason, and Pak Muhammad Aldo. Uh, we will contact you directly after this event. Uh, so please, uh, please uh, send your, oh, okay, we, has, we have your uh, registration form. So we will contact you after this event. Uh, maybe we will continue to the next uh, event. Uh, 
for the for Mbak Dian, are you there? Yes, Revan. Wait, okay. yeah, let me let me share the slide. We will continue to the uh, give a momento session from Mbak Dian. Cannot wait for the momento. <laughs> Let me share um. Okay. Uh, maybe, uh, Pak Hari, do you have any statement or uh, closing statement for us? Yeah, uh, first of all, we uh, personally and then as uh, on behalf of company, thank you very much for the SPE uh, who arranged this uh, event. So this is a good event for us. So we can introduce our uh, portfolio and flip to the wider uh, society basically and then through this uh, platform uh, SPE platform uh, international and yeah once again thank you very much for for the invites and yeah we waiting for you for the next invite actually yeah for the other topics yeah thank you very much yeah. Hari, the honor is ours yeah so as a token of appreciation from SPE Java Indonesia section we would like to present you with this e certificate. So we will also send a, mem a memento yeah, uh, to your address later on. So don't worry. <laughs> yeah. uh, even Thank though you, we buddy. couldn't give this to you directly, um, we hope this shows our appreciation for your time and effort uh, on sharing your valuable knowledge with all of us. Yeah. Uh, so big round of, of applause for Pak, Her for Pak Hari. Yeah? Thank you very much. Thank you, Pak. Thank you, Pak Hari. Good presentation. <laughs> Thank you, Pak. Yeah. Okay, so uh, besides for the speakers, we will also would like to present the certificate for um, the moderators, for Refandi. Uh, thank you very much to mo for moderating this uh, event. Yeah, And also for Laras. Uh, we appreciate very much for your uh, contribution uh, to make the event more smooth. Yeah, <laughs> thank you very much. And uh, in Indonesia, I can say jangan kapok. <laughs> All right. So before um, let's um, uh, what you get take some snapshot. Yeah, there we cannot take pictures directly, but snapshots. So first of all, with Pak Hari. Um, Maybe Mbak Fanya can help to take a snapshot, ya Mbak? Or Revan? Yeah, I can take a picture. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, in the three, uh, four, one, two, three. Say cheers. Yes. Oh, uh, maybe you can unshare first the presentation, but okay. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Oh. Wait. You can uh, go to the speak. Uh, sorry, the speaker mode. Oh, okay. Sorry, yeah, I have answers. Yeah. Mm. So we can see the certificate and also Pak Hari and our. Ah, I see. Okay. Yeah, you can get it. <laughs> I get it. Okay. Okay. Uh, another picture. Okay. One, two, three. Say cheers. Cheers. Okay, next one uh, with your certificate. Okay. Uh, one, two, and three. Cheers. Okay, next one with Laras. One, two, three. Cheers. 
Okay, so thank you. Now I will unshare and I hope uh, all participants can turn on their camera so we can take uh, the group picture. Group snapshot. Sorry, but I think there is the session for the documentation of this participant. Sorry, sorry. So gallery view, yeah, okay. So we'll wait another uh, half a minute for the participants to turn on your camera. Okay, maybe let's take a snapshot, Evan. Okay, everyone. Uh, one, two, three, say cheers. Wait a moment. Another picture, maybe. One, two, three. Okay, Malian, it's done. Sorry, you're still unmute. Thank you very much. I'll give it back to you, Refan, to close the session. Okay, thank you, Madian. Okay, Laras. Okay. Yeah, okay, thank you, Pak Hari and Badian. And finally, now we have come to the end of this event. And I, Laras Atilina Putri, with my partner, Refan Diradiza represent the committee and SPE Java section want to say thank you to our speaker Pak Hari Susilo for your time and willingness to be a speaker in this event and also for Wellbore Integrity Solution for being our SPE Java sponsorship. And thank you to all of the participants who join SPE Tech Talks and hopefully what we have shared and get today can give benefit for us. And don't forget to fill in the attendance form in bit.ly slash SPE Tech Talks to receive the e-certificate. Please wait another interesting event from SP Java section by follow our social media. Thank you and see you on the next event. Thank you. Thank you, Pak. Thank you. Terima kasih, Pak Hari. Bye. Terima kasih waktunya. Terima kasih, yeah. Thank you.